So if you're like me, you were on social media this weekend, and when you were on social media, you might have seen this article by Global News, and they make the case, based largely off an anecdote of one Instagram influencer in the United States, that Canadian millennials are struggling largely because the Instagram lifestyle makes them have FOMO, and they overspend, and that's why they have debt, and that's why they can't afford homes, and that's why they have the financial struggles, etc., etc., etc. And if you're also like me, you realize that this is BS, that it's a blatantly transparent form of victim-blaming designed to make millennials feel bad about their lives because of their own individual failings and desires, and not because of the overwhelmingly systemic nature of generational inequality. That's the fundamental role of this piece, is to make you and make your parents and make policymakers and make everyone who hates the millennials say, well, it's that darn Instagram, and it's that darn Twitter, and it's that darn Facebook, and it's the darn materialistic millennials with their avocado toast and their selfies. And don't look at the fact that education is too expensive. Don't look at the fact that housing is too expensive. Or don't look at the fact that pensions don't exist anymore, or where they do exist for young workers, they're inferior to those pensions that existed for previous generations. Look at none of that, and let's look at the one Instagram celebrity who overspent, and let's look at one study from Credit Karma, and let's make an extrapolation here that conveniently ignores the fact that we maybe should be taxing the rich, and that maybe it's not millennials' fault. And maybe individual actions can't replace collective solutions. So as I noted, the piece is almost entirely in the first half at least focused on Lizette Calviero, who was a then early 20s Instagram influencer who spent way too much money trying to live the lifestyle or at least look like she was living the lifestyle. And she said that, you know, Instagram and other social media platforms gave her this sense that she needed to do this because if she didn't, she would fall behind socially. She wouldn't be able to live the life that she wanted to live. Other people would judge her and on and on and on. And I don't necessarily feel that this is a disingenuous argument. There are certainly some people who through social media get a certain sense of FOMO who through social media get to see the best of their friends and their colleagues' lives and maybe judge themselves in relation to that rather than to the day-to-day lives of their colleagues, which maybe is more similar to their own than to the idealized vision they see on these social media platforms. I'm not saying that's not a reasonable point, but they extrapolate this to the fact that Instagram is the reason millennials overspend. And they have a quote here from Manulife CEO Rick Lunny, and he says, Particularly among millennial-age Canadians, I would say everybody lives a perfect life on Instagram. Everyone looks at everyone else's social feeds and sees their vacations and their celebrations and their concerts, and so they really have this fear of missing out, and it's obviously contributing to their overall ability to manage their cash flows. That's his argument. This is a big dog CEO of a major company saying, you know, it's Instagram that's, that's hurting the kids these days. And of course, somebody like him doesn't want us to talk about how maybe it's generalized inequality. Maybe FOMO plays a role, but maybe the reason why people have to go into debt to, to, to engage in social activities is because they have less money than their parents did. There, there's, that's, that's not here. That is not here. And so they basically make the case because they sound, they want to sound like geniuses. So they go to Lunny. He's like, well, how can we fix this, Mr. Lunny? And he says, well, the best way is to spend less money than you make. Really? Really? You think that's actually advice? You're going to go to a generation that is among the highest educated in human history, yet suffers due to the cost of that education, the cost of housing, the inavailability of retirement savings, the inavailability of good jobs, you know, to, to, to make use of that education. And you're going to say to them, well, at the end of the day, it's really about you spending more money than you have. I don't think that's a fair point. I don't think that's a fair point at all. So they go through a whole bunch of things. They say, well, you should download some apps that help you manage your cash flow, or maybe you should guarantee yourself to save 10% of your weekly paycheck or your bi-weekly paycheck or what have you, and you should plan ahead to save money to buy things like houses and to start your life, and if you do these things, you'll be less likely to, you know, have this FOMO effect. 
and they note that, well, you shouldn't use Instagram too much, you shouldn't use social media too much, you should especially avoid them at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day when you're vulnerable to to being uh, coaxed into this fantasy vision of your friends and your colleagues' lives. All of this is done, again, all of this is done to make it look like it's your fault. It's a millennial's individual fault that they are struggling and that they can't achieve life milestones. And it's not the system's fault at all. In no way is it the system's fault of, of, regarding education costs or a failure to tax the rich or general inequality between the generations. None of that exists here. This is much like how we deal with climate change in a kind of capitalist discourse. It's not about challenging the globalized system of, you know, carbon-based capitalism in which, you know, the world's largest companies produce a majority of the, the carbon emissions. It's about individualizing the fight for climate change because that prevents the more effective and more transformative collective results. And so much the same here, everything's like, well, you know, if you want to buy something, place it in your shopping cart and take a 24-hour embargo. Or again, get your apps to help manage your finances. None of this addresses the core issue at hand. It might help some individual people in some individual cases, but this is not the origin and this is not the primary effect of the millennial financial struggle. So I'm going to throw up a chart here, and this was in the tweet chain of this global article. And that tweet got pretty strongly ratioed, which is great to see. And this notes that for young Canadians, wages are down relative to previous generations. They graduate college and university at much higher rates. They have significantly higher student debts, and perhaps the biggest jump here in some ways, significantly higher home prices. So when you add all of these things together... Gee, it doesn't seem like it's Instagram's fault. It doesn't seem like it's Facebook or Twitter's fault. Or it doesn't seem like it's FOMO's fault. It doesn't seem like it's keeping up with the Joneses' fault. It seems like millennials are working harder for less, and they're struggling because of it. That's a recipe for financial struggle. And, like, let's be real here. Millennials will not be the first nor the last generation to overspend from time to time because they're trying to keep up with the neighbors or their friends or their colleagues or their bosses or what have you. This is nothing new. And sure, you could make the case that social media adds a certain intensity to this keeping up with the Joneses attitude, but I don't think that's the main factor at play. Our parents had the same issue, and many of our parents went into debt to keep up appearances. But I'll tell you what, statistically, because with less education, they got cheaper houses and higher wages and more job security and better retirement savings through better pensions, it meant that if they did have a bit of FOMO, it wasn't the end of the world for most people. But it is for far too many millennials. So again, in closing, I don't want to suggest that FOMO plays no role. And I don't want to suggest that there's no value in suggesting to people that, hey, Instagram is not real life, and so stop trying to live up to the reality you see on other people's feeds. There's nothing wrong inherently with that. But to cast this as the origin and fundamental basis of millennial financial struggle is lying. Again, it is a blatant effort to individualize a fundamentally systemic issue within Canadian and broader Western society. Millennials do not make enough money, their housing is too expensive, their healthcare is too expensive, their pension savings are insufficient, and across every kind of metric, they're doing worse off than their parents, even when they do better than their parents at the supposed, you know, good ways to live life. This is the cause of the millennial struggle. It's not Instagram, it's not avocado toast, it's capitalism, folks. And that's why they want us to talk about Instagram, because they don't want us to talk about capitalism. They don't want us to talk about the fundamental inequalities in our society that are not just between generations, but within them. And when we individualize what should be collectivized, the many lose and the few win. So let's change this, folks. It was great to see this piece get ratioed, but let's really push back against this. The millennial generation struggles are legitimate and they're not individual, they're collective. It's time we started acting like it.